Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Today I'm dropping in an open source uh, logic analyzer on a $22 FPGA board. I'm back from the Hackaday Supercon, and if you didn't go this year, you gotta go to the next one. We had a great time. On my way there, I saw an article about uh, somebody who had taken the little ice stick, and we'll show this a little bit more here in a second, and dropped a uh, sump analyzer. Sump is the open source logic analyzer, but it's a sump V2. Uh, where he did some things to make it fit in this. And uh, I thought, hey, I got to do this when I get back. I got to play around with this and uh, show it to you. So here we go. So this is based on the ice stick, which Al Williams has written a great series of articles for Hackaday from. Uh, check him out if you want to program from scratch. He's got open source tools, he's a lot of cool things, and show, walks you through uh, Verilog programming. What I'm doing today is a little different. I'm going to go ahead and use the tools that come with the stick, and uh, uh, they're free, so they're kind of like open source to me, and I, 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 get, I like getting close to the manufacturer's tools, just my background uh, for over the years. And um, then I'm going to take the code from a guy named Kevin Hubbard from Black Mesa Labs wrote and really converted the heck out of it to make it fit in this and to not use RAM. And if you think of a logic analyzer, you know, all those squiggles and everything, they use a lot of RAM to record that if you're recording each and every time slice. Well, what Kevin does is he does run length encoding. And this is one of the oldest and simplest compression schemes. And basically it says, hey, if you've got a one and a long distance of zeros and then another one, instead of going one, zero, 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 it goes one and 28 zeros and another one. So you literally are storing only a couple bytes to uh, do a whole length of time. And the example Kevin uses is radar where you do a ping and you wait a long time for it to come back he can digitize all of that with run length encoding and just take up a little bit of room now and and if you're an old fart like me you remember the voyager voyager one voyager two probably not the one from the star trek show where they did a flyby of, of uranus and neptune and they lost a bit in their really old machine and it came out right in the rle run length encoding and they had black streaks and the really cool programmers at jpl reprogrammed the code to jump around the bad bit and the black streaks went away for, and run length encoding worked correctly so it's a cool technique he manages then to store lots and lots of of transitions in a in a very minimal amount of ram so let me show you the ice stick up close all right here's a close-up of the stick and before i get going too far i also want to mention jenny list uh, also featured this in a hackaday article and again, I do want to point you at Al's uh, a great set of articles using this stick as just a real cheap way to get started. And that's what got my attention, the uh, $22 part. Uh, I've been kind of playing around with just the old standard way of doing it, you know, just kind of spare time stuff. And I've got a collection of boards that, that I was thinking about maybe importing the old Sump V1 or just write a brute force logic analyzer, which basically would grab and shove. Uh, whatever it sees on the signals into SRAM. And, uh, you know, hey, now I may do this. But th again, the beauty in this is that it fits in this small package and you can play with one of these for, what, 22 bucks and some test leads. So if we look at what we have here on the board, uh, here's our lattice device. It's a 40HX1K and it's got 160 LEDs in it. If you don't know what that means, it means it's medium small by my reckoning. Uh, 144 pins. And, you know, what Kevin did was he found. 16 IO lines that we can use here. Now these IO lines are 3 volt and I'm going to demonstrate on 3 volt and if you remember some of my other uh, uh, videos there's a lot of ways to convert from 3 volt to 5 volt. A again Black Mesa Labs has a small board that you can just uh, build right off Oshpark. He has it in the public domain there that's basically just 5 volt tolerant 3 volt buffer that can feed into this so you know for the cost of a buck or two from Oshpark. So uh, this thing does run at 96 megabits per second, which is pretty, pretty awesome kind of for something this size. And we got, he's got a total of 16 bits. There's the other piece to this is the Python GUI that actually displays the signals. So before we get going on the actual development software, um, I'm jumping on over to blackmesalabs.wordpress.com. I'll put this link up and uh, where Kevin's got his project, and at the bottom we have the uh, source files. Now you can do just a bit file if you just want to run a programmer. Uh, I'm going to be using the design files and actually compiling it for you. And while you're here, there's two more files to grab for the uh, Python GUI portion of it. 
He also has a troubleshooting fact here somewhere that I didn't find and open until after I had troubleshoot something that was actually in the troubleshooting fact. So <laughs> you might want to grab that too. Over on the Lattice Semiconductor website, if you drill down under IceCube 2, which is their uh, free development software, uh, you'll see you have a choice for Linux or Windows. And the only thing is there is a licensing step where you need to register the MAC address of your computer. Uh, to me, that's a small price for some pretty reasonable software. Next, you'll want the programmer, again, off their website, and here's their selection, 32-bit, 64-bit. And this is also free, uh, and I don't recall having to register the MAC address, but don't hold it against me. My memory sucks these days. So you'll, you'll need to grab this regardless where you get the IceCube. This is how we get it onto the uh, ice stick. Here's the Lattice IceCube 2 software, and to load the file, you navigate to the files you unpack from Black Mesa Labs, and under the impl directory is a project that you load. You can see right there it says project. Once you're done, the all the design files are there. Here's our top with a not cool little image of the uh, ice stick, and all the th all the different blocks that made this uh, do what it does. So let me show you a block diagram here before we go much further. Here's the sump two block diagram, and uh, remember. RLE, meaning run length encoding, you know, it's at the core of this thing. Uh, in, in what the author, Kevin, did was he made it so that this could be real small and he could stick it in an FPGA he was working on without taking a lot of room. That's why it fits in this little $22 thing. Or it can actually be expanded and just do some honking. Let's get rid of that zero there. Very good. Get uh, all that. This, he can do a honking wide grab of memory straight into static RAM, SRAM. But the mode we're using it in is we've got the events, which is his name for the signals we're listening to, and in the lattice uh, we're doing 16 of those. It's going into a trigger detect, and that trigger detect is something we program through the USB port uh, to write to that says, oh, here's the condition. It, it was listening and recording the, you should see me, I'm waving my hands now. It was, re, it was, um, recording the data that happened before the trigger event and then it records the data after in the trigger somewhere in the middle and so it's compressing this and putting it in SRAM already compressed and the address generator is that thing that makes a circular buffer to use the SRAM that's there and this SRAM is actually the stuff built right in the FPGA so you can imagine there's not a lot of it so and here you see Mesa bus interface. He's he's probably reusing his code that he's written for other projects. Uh, I think all good guys do that. You probably do it yourself. And then down here at the bottom we have straight up SRAM. Now this was probably what I was going to do on my own board if I ever got around to it. Because to me I was I'm not trying to squeeze it in with something else. I just wanted simple honking words of data going into SRAM. And again the address generator would would sit there and make a big old circular buffer out of it. So. Pretty straightforward. It's just kind of uh, addressing RAM and listening, except that he's got this step in here where he run length encodes it. Now, the sump, original sump spec, try to run length encode it to send it across the bus to speed it up. And what Kevin Hubbard did was run length encode it before it even gets in the SRAM. Here are the design files. They're written in Verilog. And again, uh, the author's taken the time to show us a cute little picture here. Uh, I'm going to show you three files real quick. The rest, if you go into them, there's a UART, there's SPI PROM. I mean, they're, they're pretty straightforward. He's got his own version of a local bus and a bus he calls Mesa bus. But th it's real typical to have a top something. I, I usually call it top myself. Sometimes I call it U1, U2, if, if I need to keep several in the same design separate. Then um, there's almost always something dealing with the clock. And if I import this to Altera or Xilinx, I'm going to have to redo the PLL, the phase lock loop, the way it clocks. He used the GUI build into this. I doubt I'm going to have time to show it to you today. I do something very similar in Altera where I tend to work. Matter of fact, I fire up an old version just to get the wizard because I don't remember all the 40 different encoding uh, abbreviations that sound like and stuff. So uh, I use a wizard. The final one is Sump, and that's where he does the uh, the majority of the work that's, that is unique to this logic analyzer. And here is where I was talking about where you can set how deep you want, how do you want to use run length encoding, do you not want to use run length encoding, how many bits do you want, it's all that stuff is set right here as opposed to hard coded. And if my memory's cracked, the Sump 1 project 
was lots of hard coding. So it's more tedious to do it this way. Again, good good writing style. If you uh, if you if you're using good writing style, this is what it looks like. The next step, let's say you did change some of the variables or just want to compile it yourself. You run the run simplify pro synthesis. And uh, uh, one thing I'll tell you r real quick is that uh, all the things, the constraints are already done as part of the project. So we don't have to worry about the pin numbers and the voltages and everything like that. Even though, um, you know, I showed you the Verilog files, there's other stuff in the background that's, that's called the constraints. So from here, we just have to uh, actually do all of the steps uh, placing and routing and finally creating the, the bitmap. So we'll run the place and router. Yeah, go ahead, run it from the beginning. And here we see that it's generated the bitmap. And so from here on, it's just a matter of running the programmer. I've opened the programmer, which is now called Diamond Programmer, even though that's not what it was called when we downloaded it from the Lattice website. I'm going to open an existing product project because remember that the that the author pre-did the whole project for us and so it already knows that I'm going to be talking to an ICE 40 and the device and everything but the one thing we do need to change is that the file we're going to program it with quite simply the path is wrong for my system it's probably wrong for your system as well so I'm going to click in here and change it to where the bin actually did uh, compile to. All right, I've already installed Python on this uh, computer and I'm not going to go into all the different ways uh, environments can be different. Um, I will say that this works with the most recent copy of Python that I just got off the uh, um, off their site, probably 3.5 or something like that. So the author had some uh, directions for how to do this, but I'm going to try and recreate how I did it when I first tested it. So let's see how it goes. So I'm tending to do, instead of going out and downloading, I'm, I'm just using the uh, built-in installer to install the different modules here. So I installed setup tools. I'm installing Pi Serial. I'm installing Wheel. I don't know if I need it. I don't remember if I need it, but I know I did it. And I'm installing Pi Game, which the uh, application actually runs under. So the author has instructions that you need to follow for getting the lattice stick to talk correctly. I'm actually a little out of order here. I did the Python first for you all, but you get the idea. And the instructions are straightforward as you see here, but really what we're trying to do is uh, we're going to go to the uh, USB serial port for the lattice, which you'll find under your devices. I'm doing this in Windows. And you'll click load VCP, and then we're going to unplug the stick and replug it back in. Here I've dumped the two scripts and an any file that came with the Black Mesa project into uh, Python slash scripts, goes places any. There's two pieces to the Python part. There's a server that camps on the port, and then there's the Pygame application itself uh, called Sump. Uh, but we're going to first start the server, and it will probably fail, and you should see the failure because it'll probably fail for you, and, here's, and I'll show you how to fix it. Okay, what happens if the uh, server software even started up for you, which it probably will, uh, it pops yet another window, and you can see that it's uh, camping on a TCP socket. But then right after that, it says fail, and, and the connection to USB auto failed. Um, and then down here, we see that also. And so what's got to happen is we've got to hunt down the any file and change the COM port to the one that it actually came up with um, in your system. And I had to go to, uh, on my laptop, it showed up right under devices. It showed the COM port. On this computer here, I had to dig down into the uh, hardware preferences under System Device Driver Manager and get the COM port. In my case, it's COM port 19. Yeah, I must have a lot of COM port, so hang on a second. Here's the file bd underscore server dot ini, and I'm going to change the auto. Forget the spelling, I just did that. I'm going to change the auto to my COM port, and I'm going to save this out. We're going to try it again. Here's what it looks like when it completes successfully. You see all four OKs and it says five by five. Now I did have to jump over to the Workbench PC to make this work, which is now on COM4 instead of COM19. My uh, video PC, it just has too many things going on. It streams video, it does audio straight into a mixer panel and stuff. So uh, we're on the Workbench uh, moving forward. So now, now we uh, go ahead and load the application itself. Starting sump2.py, you can put this in a batch file, as Kevin mentions in his notes. And there's the Pygame application running, 
showing the uh, the events, the signal lines. Now, what's not obvious is to zoom in and out of this, you use page up, I'm sorry, use home and end. Now, it's not in the menu. Uh, Kevin mentioned that if you were to go to miscellaneous, it's supposed to be here. What I found was if you go to line 5641 in sump2.py, 5641 here, sump2.py, and uncomment this out, it will appear in your menu. So just make that change, save it, and uh, stop and start the sump2.py, and you'll, you'll have the font larger and smaller, because I'm an old guy, and uh, I can't see the small things sometimes these days. Here the author is actually showing how he tested his, uh, I could have built one of these, but I'm kind of shy on time today. So I'm just going to show you what he did. He built a counter, shoved it into the inputs on his uh, lattice, and we get a pretty functional waveform display. So, uh, you, you know, is it everything? No. Or, or do you need something professionally? Maybe you need to check out Salig or something. Uh, but the thing about this is it's open source, so functions can be added. Maybe you're the one to add them. So, uh, again, to, to see this, you can go to blackmesalabs.wordpress.com. No, I don't work for them. No, we're not selling anything. This is just a cool little open source thing. Um, and I'll tell you that if you have something you think you, you wouldn't mind me tearing into and sending uh, a couple hundred emails asking questions about, uh, shoot me a line at billherd at hackaday.com, or you can put it into the uh, tip line for Hackaday. And, um, by the way, Bill Hurd's with 1L. You know that, right? But um, you can put it into the tip line, and you might put something in the thing, a subject for video, and I'll tell the people what that might mean if I get around to it. So, uh, but cute little display here, and again, open source. So that wraps up this video. Again, $22, open source, add to it, make it something better. You can find things like these online and make yourself actually a, a pretty uh, real, scan, uh, real logic analyzer. Actually, I want to add state tables to it, do disassembly, and maybe SPI analysis, you know anything but uh and it's it great looking in on on somebody else's code it it's always gives you a new perspective and uh if you do look in on this and it seems kind of high level don't don't be concerned it is high level but again you can build on it or you can take the idea simplify it and 22 dollars so bill heard from hackaday uh you know if you got something you want to have me tear apart let me know otherwise we'll catch you on the next video